the Assistant Research Officers here in Frontier, Costa Rica, and my chosen animal is the turtle. We have two species of turtle here, the olive woodly and the green. Females usually return to the beaches that they were hatched on to lay their nests, and this is 30 years after they were hatched, so they've got a pretty long memory. They lay up to 110 eggs per clutch, but only 0.1% of these will make it to adulthood. Females try and hide their nests in vegetation and in places where predators such as coati and vultures aren't going to get them. Turtles' main threats are poaching, beach development and climate change. Climate change is particularly important as the sexes of the eggs are determined by the temperature the nests are kept at. So our main work here to try and combat these threats is a long-term monitoring program to see the abundance of turtles returning to the beach and we operate a hatchery with releases in the appropriate breeding seasons for the turtles. Peter, I'm the principal investigator of Costa Rica Forest Program. I picked the um, the black-handed spider monkey, also known as Atelus Geoffrey, since it's endangered throughout its range due to habitat loss and hunting. Um, yeah, we do have reasonable good numbers here. Highest densities occur in uh, mature forests, the, yeah, higher abundance of fruit trees. They, are, they have a specialized diet, the, uh, the diet is ripe fruit. They, uh, they live in, in large groups. But in the morning they split up into subgroups. They go to forage in different parts throughout their range. Um, so they, they do this in order to prevent competition amongst each other. So they pick different fruit trees. Yeah. Not a lot of people know that it's it's a really intelligent primate. It has an amazing memory. Um, There's like a cognitive map. He knows every single fruit tree throughout their range. Yeah, they are ranked amongst the most intelligent primates alongside the, the chimpanzee. They only recently discovered that. We're here to conserve them, yeah, we study them, we try to map their uh, home range and get to know an estimation of their numbers. So we can come up together with uh, the owners of the land, also conservation, uh, come up with a management plan in order to effectively conserve the species here and be an example for other parts throughout the range. Hi, I'm Jackson Shanks. I'm an assistant research officer here in Costa Rica. And for my animal, I've chosen the northern tamandua, the anteater, because I hate ants. Unlike other tropical mammals, the anteater can change its body temperature according to the season and climate that it's living in. So this results in strange diurnal behavior where it's active at both daytime and nighttime and this preference can change throughout the year. Its diet is constituted of ants in the wet season and termites in the dry season because of the juices that the termites provide and also occasionally bees. Using its large claws on its forearm, it rips into the ants or termites nest and it stays there for quite a small amount of time to avoid the soldier ants which uh, release chemicals and attack the anteater. Um, so using its long worm-like sticky tongue, it grabs as many larvae and small ants as it can and then it moves on to the next site. When threatened by predators, the anteater stands up on its long prehensile tail and hind legs holding its strong claws uh, ready to attack any oncoming predators such as dogs. Because of this, the anteater is often hunted by farmers around the area. To help the anteater out here, we're doing a lot of work with reforestation and that's to help conserve and grow its habitat. The monkey here is somewhat like the mascot of camp. Their voice is ubiquitous. You'll hear it from morning to night, always. And that's why they're so important to us here. Hull monkeys can live in groups of two to up to 42 individuals. We've seen groups of about 20 coming through camp here, so there's a huge variation there. The reason they howl is because their diet is such low energy 
mainly composed of leaves. So, rather than moving to define their territory and to ward off predators, they howl to scare them off. The howler monkey's call is not what you'd initially expect. It can go for several kilometers and it's incredibly loud. It's even been used as the roar of the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. So that's where you might have heard of it before. Howler monkeys, whilst not endangered, are threatened by the same things as the other monkeys you have here. Habitat loss, deforestation, poaching, and they're used for biomedical research. So a lot of the work that we do going to help the howlers is similar to that with the spider monkeys. We're looking for total abundance so that we can work out ways to conserve them and then keep them here for the next generation. The chestnut mandible toucan is one of the most iconic birds of the area. It's instantly recognisable, with its wonderful silhouette and its very beautiful beak. The toucan is a very distinctive bird with a yellow blue beak shaped like this. It's an arboreal animal and it goes for frogs and lizards and a range of other uh, species. But it's also got a bad reputation because it's, uh, it bullies other birds, such as the fiery billed Aracari, a rare bird around here. Uh, and it's often quite thug like, but it's a fascinating, fascinating species. The toucan has a very distinctive noise. It sounds quite like a seagull, it can be mistaken for a seagull. You find them in groups of about 12 uh, to twos, as it's small. So, two to 12, uh, you find them in, in, in groups, often in smaller groups. So, why is the toucan important? Toucan is important because it's one of the key indicator species. It leaves very important large uh, trees, old growth forest to nest to be able to live. So the program that we are involved in is reforesting a lot of the Osa Peninsula and creating more habitat and protecting existing habitat for this very, very important indicator species, an endangered species and one that we really need to protect. <laughs>